They're two of the most talked about smartphones of 2013, but despite the fact that they each run Android, they don't have much in common. So let's put them head to head. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is Samsung Galaxy S4 versus HTC One. Not only do these smartphones differ aesthetically, they're also coming from completely different places philosophically. HTC shot for a total reinvention with the One, making a phone that looks nothing like last year's One X, while Samsung stuck with what it knew, iterating only marginally from the Galaxy S3. We have a more detailed analysis of the Galaxy S4 in our full review, and you should follow us on social media and here on YouTube so you don't miss our continuing coverage of this new flagship. For this comparison, we're sticking to five areas. Build, specs, UI, camera, and some test notes. In terms of build, the differences between these phones leap right out, even with a cursory glance. The HTC One features an aluminum chassis 9mm thick, tapering to 4mm on the sides, with injected polycarbonate on the back and a side-to-side -side display cutout on the front, combining with a beveled edge and machined speaker holes to create a smartphone that's unapologetically, almost brutally, modern. Its aluminum is smooth, often cool to the touch, and its 143 grams give it the barest hint of heft in the hand. It feels like a well-crafted luxury instrument, which in some ways it is. By contrast, the Galaxy S4 looks and feels like a modest iteration over its predecessor. The S4 is more rounded, with a much more subtle feeling overall than the HTC One. It looks thicker from some angles, but that's an illusion caused by the full-width silver ring running the perimeter of the casing. The S4 is a mere 7.9 millimeters in thickness, almost all the way across. In the hand, its 130 gram weight makes it so light as to almost seem like a retail dummy, and the hyperglaze coating on the polycarbonate gives it an almost tacky feeling. You're not as likely to drop the S4 as you might be the smooth metal one, but you'll want to avoid dropping either. The soft metal chamfer on the One is very susceptible to pitting on impact, and the glossy coating on the S4 picks up scratches extremely easily. Neither of these is rated for ruggedness. What the S4 lacks in design punch, it makes up for in other areas, and that brings us into specs. The S4's 5-inch SAMOLED display is larger than the One's 4.7-inch SLCD3, and it delivers richer colors and deeper blacks. Its viewing angles aren't quite as good, though, and it's a bit cooler than the One's overall. The size difference isn't too noticeable in hand. Despite Samsung's larger panel, it's just as usable with one hand as HTC's screen due to the S4's tiny bezels. They're both excellent 1080p displays, kicking out absurdly high pixel density at 468 ppi for the HTC and 441 ppi for the Samsung. Which one users personally prefer will vary greatly. They're both top-tier displays, though. Beneath those screens, there are some similarities here. While Samsung's Exynos 5 Okta powers some versions of the Galaxy S4, our Sprint version here sports a Qualcomm Snapdragon 600 running at 1.9 GHz, slightly faster than the Snapdragon 600 running at 1.7 GHz inside our Sprint HTC One. There's 2 gigs of RAM on each phone, but storage options vary, with the S4 offering 16, 32, and 64 GB variants, and microSD expansion up to an additional 64 gigs while the HTC One comes in either 32 or 64 gigs with no micro SD slot. And while we're talking about what is and isn't removable, we should mention that the 2300 mAh battery in the HTC One is embedded, smaller than the swappable 2600 mAh battery in the Galaxy S4. More battery life commentary can be found in the full review of each phone. These devices are both beastly in terms of raw numbers, but the Galaxy S4, with its removable battery, expandable memory, and larger display, will probably be a better fit for the spec-obsessed. Diving into the software only highlights how disparate these devices are. HTC's Sense 5 overlay running atop Android Jelly Bean is a flat, minimalistic skin emphasizing grays and blacks, with add-ons like BlinkFeed bringing a boxy, tile-like feel we haven't seen before in Android. The UI is responsive to a fault, with lag very difficult to induce. The TouchWiz skin running on the Galaxy S4 is, once again, less a total rewrite, more a minor tweak. Samsung's bright and colorful software design persists in the new TouchWiz, and while it's normally just as responsive as we've come to expect from Samsung, we did pick up a stutter here and there. It's nothing that makes the S4 particularly unpleasant to use, but there might be some optimization that has yet to happen here. 
Truthfully, the more annoying thing about TouchWiz is how rapidly it's aging. Its cartoonish style really needs a revamp. Of course, Samsung is the king of added features, and the S4 is no exception. Some features like AirView are actually quite handy and make a lot of sense. Others, like Air Gesture, are a little less polished and fall more on the gimmicky side of things. Both the One and the S4 offer remote control applications to control home media centers, TVs, and so on. But Samsung really goes the extra mile with its Watch On integration, and it's obviously making a more serious content play than HTC. If an expanded suite of apps and services is important to you, the Galaxy S4 will be the way to go. If you value a smartphone experience with very refined, very modern software design, though, the One is a better choice. In terms of optics, these devices take a different approach to delivering quality photos. The HTC One's 4-megapixel camera is low on resolution, but its ultra-pixel design with optical image stabilization allows it to capture 300% more light for nighttime shots. HTC has also rethought what a gallery should look like and implemented new sharing features with the One, which we covered in an earlier video. Samsung has taken the more conventional approach, eschewing fancy buzzwords for a simple bump in resolution to 13 megapixels from last year's standard 8. It's also revamped its viewfinder software, porting some innovations from the Galaxy camera like the shooting mode menu, and adding fun features like drama shot and animated photo. The results are good on each side. The Galaxy S4 delivers photos with higher saturation both indoors and out, and of course their resolution is much higher, allowing for greater zoomability. Though the camera packs a 13 megapixel sensor, it's important to note that the default shooting mode confines photos to 9.6 megapixels. That's to preserve a 16 to 9 aspect ratio, so that's the setting we used for most of our testing period. The camera took a little longer to focus than we're used to, a problem exacerbated by how light and easy to shake the phone is, and it didn't always launch as quickly as the camera on the One. Also, low-light performance wasn't anywhere near as good, and the front-facing camera can't compare with the wide-angle lens on the One. But for photos you can print without much worry, or pictures you want to zoom in real close on, the Galaxy S4 will probably be the better choice. And either way you go, video performance is great. Check out our full review of each of these devices, as well as our comparison features at Pocket Now for more photo analysis. In terms of everyday use, the ups and downs continue. The One is excellent at noise cancellation and voice calls taken over the earpiece, and the Boom Sound speakers provide an outstanding loudspeaker calling experience as well. Those front-firing speakers definitely outclass the Galaxy S4's single rear-mounted unit. The difference isn't so much about loudness, Samsung has boosted the output on the S4 speaker, and it's actually quite loud. Rather, the difference comes in sound quality, the forward placement, and the stereo effect of the widely placed speakers on the One. It's the best audio experience we've had on a smartphone. Performance in other sectors is roughly on par. App launch times are comparable, and reception seems about even between the two devices on Sprint's network, though Sprint's 4G network in Boston really needs some work in speed and reliability. Overall, the One's software is more responsive, but the Galaxy S4 counters by offering more of the interface features we mentioned before. Some are more useful than others, but they're there if you want them. Each of these devices runs one of the newest builds of Android. It's the same OS under there, but you wouldn't know it based on how thoroughly HTC and Samsung have modified it in very different ways. If you want more features than you can possibly use, an expandable memory capacity and swappable battery in the lightest possible package with one of the biggest screens on the market, and feature compatibility with the rest of Samsung's Galaxy family, the Galaxy S4 is the phone for you. If you're looking for a slightly different feature set, emphasizing a slick UI, very cool camera features, excellent voice performance, and the best audio we've heard from a handheld, all encased in a shell that's more art than phone, the HTC One is the way to go. Either way, you'll be getting one of the best smartphones Android has to offer. That's going to do it for now, folks, but we have a whole lot more Galaxy S4 content at pocketnow.com and also here on YouTube. So, like I said earlier, follow us, subscribe to us, throw us a like if you enjoyed the video, drop us a comment if you have something to say, and thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.